what the purpose of this this conversation tonight is it's just a so this is uh this is just a nice laid back conversation um a little bit getting to know about your uh your thoughts as casting directors um so first of all obviously the first thing i would like to do is to ask you to introduce yourself uh pretend for a moment that we've never heard of you uh how would you uh how would you um how would you describe yourself uh, to us and um, hey. wh whoever wants to go first is very welcome to <laughs> Oh, go on then. Um, so my name's Kate Evans. I am a casting director. Um, I mainly cast commercials, but I do do short film and I have done a couple of feature films. I have done theatre as well in the past. Um, I'm currently chair of the CDA, which I'm very honoured to be and um, very proud to be part of the CDA. Um, and that's about it. I'm living at home. I'm working at home. I don't feel like I'm ever leaving the house. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Um, and that is a brilliant thing just to let anyone who is watching that doesn't know the CDA is the Casting Directors Association, which is um, a huge, brilliant um, organisation that we have here in the UK. I feel like I've become DJ now. So <laughs> um, You're doing uh, a fantastic so, job. Keep it up. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, and that would be absolutely normal, I think. Um, my name is Sophie Holland, I'm also a casting director. Um, I guess I'll... I'll do a bit of anything really, a bit of TV I suppose is where my sort of specialist subject lies, but also done a bit of theatre and a bit of film in the past. Yeah. Nice. Well thank you very much, yeah a real, uh, a real breadth of experience uh, all around. Um, so really uh, a lot of what we wanted to discuss today was, um, I suppose you call them the, the, the fundamentals, uh, there's not really a, a bad time to take a look at your process as an actor, how you present yourself to a casting director, and how you can make a, a positive and lasting impression. Because, uh, you know, I imagine that you see a lot of people uh, in the in the day to day. Um, but, you know, each one of those has the opportunity to to make an impression on you. And so it's making the most of that opportunity, I think, that, uh, that we'd like to discuss today. Um, so there are a few aspects uh, involved in that, um, and one of the first things I think that uh, the people do when they um, when they set themselves up to be uh, submitted to you online is they create for themselves uh, a profile um, on a, usually on a casting site, or perhaps it might be um, as part of their own agent's website. And uh, I just wondered, uh, first of all. When you, uh, when you visit someone's profile, when you're looking at them for the first time, what is the, what's the first thing you're looking for? What, uh, what is the first thing that your, that your eye is drawn to and you're gonna be looking for? Well, I think it depends on the project. I'm sure Sophie mm -hmm. would agree. It depends what project you're, you're working on at the time. For me, it's headshots that are in date. Mm -hmm. Recent headshots, and I always do, do like to look to see when they were taken. Um, but also an up-to-date CV. Um, playing age is a big one with me. You can't play 18 to 45. I don't care who you are. You can't do it. Um, so it's the honesty, I think, with the CV. I like to see where people are trained. I like to see recent credits. Um, but keeping the information up-to-date is very important. It really is. And keeping your headshots current is very important as well. Sophie? Yeah, I would agree. And I would also say that in even the same as in terms of like style of acting, we're drawn to certain styles. I would say the same with headshots, like we're drawn to certain things in a headshot. So for me, it's just very natural, unpresented, which is what I'm also, I guess, looking for in performances. And then ideally, especially now, I would like to see something uh, in akin to a showreel or a self tape, something where I can actually see you act. And it doesn't mm. really matter to me what that is, whether it's a, you know, a scene from a short film or, um, you know, a sort of self tape that they've done, like, I would love to see them in motion, doing something, speaking, and it doesn't really matter if it's like 15 seconds. Um, I just think it's a good indicator. And especially now when you can do that all by yourself at home, it's a really good time to get that material together. It is a perfect opportunity, isn't it? Lockdown to do some, you know, update your showreel, update your headshots, update everything really. 
Um, and I think what's so, you know, I agree with Sophie, when you're watching a show reel or even a short clip, you get a flavor of that person, you get an essence. So, yeah. and, and it is an ideal opportunity right now because not a lot of us are doing a lot. So, you know, get, okay. get your show reels together, you know, shoot something at home yeah. and get that up, which is current. Mm, thank you, lovely. Uh, speaking of the, the essence that you just mentioned, um, one of the things I wonder is, uh, to what extent, when, you, when you're when you looking at an actor, are you looking for um, adaptability and sort of like a, a blank canvas that they can, um, you know, use to, to show a versatile range of characters? And also to what aspect are you looking for people to bring an aspect of, of themselves to a role? Um, is there a balance to be found there? Yeah, I think... Um... For me, and I, I mean, I might well be wrong, but I feel like the best actors are people who find parts of themselves in the roles that they're playing and then keeps that truth going throughout. So like there, there are maybe like one in 4,000 actors who is really, is truly transformative, um, you know, right the way through but I think the smart actors make smart choices based on the material that they're given and again that's just a taste thing that that's what I'm looking for like something very honest very raw it doesn't have to be polished in fact most of the time I prefer it if it's not um, so I think I'm not really looking for someone who needs directing I would rather have someone who who comes in with an idea that they believe is true and I think that can be directed but I would prefer them to come with something over nothing I think and I think often when you're given material the thing that I love so much about it like text analysis like asking questions and using your own experiences to answer them and choose a direction is I like that work being shown to me I like to know what mm. you would bring because also especially now with self tapes being the sort of predominant way that we're seeing talent you're going to be on set and I'm not going to be there to mother you and push you in one way or another so I want to know what you bring you know but yeah. I just hate what do it's you gone. think yeah no I, I agree Sophie I think it, I, I find it quite exciting when you get an actor in the room and they bring something to it so sometimes um, I spend quite a lot of time saying that's great but you've just played a character for me I don't feel it's true. So could you try being yourself and reading the character or the lines or, you know, from you, not the character you sort of perceived in your head and you've made up? Because I think when it's raw in front of you, you can see the scope in so many different directions with that actor. But when they come in and they're blinkered and they're quite, right, I'm going to play it like this and it's going to be like this. You're like, oh, it's all so closed in. I think allow it to develop and you know it is that inner emotion and drawing on your own experiences um, and also I love it when actors come in and they play something in a way that you've never seen it before and I'm like wow no one thought about that character being like that we thought he was a happy chap but actually you've turned him into a little bit of a dark side there so it is really I think what actors bring to it is the creativity I think it's just trying to keep it open and natural rather than playing I mean, don't get me wrong, you're in pantomime, you are going to play Widow Twanky, like Widow Twanky, but, you know, the reality, the TV shows and commercials that we cast, it's about being true to themselves and being believable. And that's what we want from actors and actresses is, is the openness and the rawness, but to see, you know, their true sort of selves coming through, bringing, taking what's inside them and bringing it out, their experiences. It's a, it's a great job. I love it. It's a great process yeah. as well. No, that sounds lovely. Uh, we really look into be uh, surprised by someone in perhaps uh, seeing things you didn't expect or didn't think to ask for. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so I mean, to, to that end, uh, something else I wonder then is when you're looking at a profile, um, how much room is there for people to bring their own personal experiences into the profile? Are you looking specifically for um, acting capabilities and uh, experience, or is there perhaps room for people to bring in um, 
I, I kind of want to say extracurricular things like say for example someone's a, a keen horse rider or a, a multilingual or they are a talented unicyclist I don't know is there space for 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 different and unusual things like that on a profile is that going to make a difference to you makes a big difference to me so the person you've described would be brilliant if I could find that person Rob <laughs> absolutely um Yes, I tend to cast more weird and wonderful things um, and it, it can be quite frustrating when you put a brief out and say you do want a unicyclist and, and you, you get a hundred suggestions, you start calling agents and they say, oh no, we can't do that. And I'm like, oh, okay, that, that's what I was after. So from a lot of the jobs that I do, I do need stilt walkers or fire breathers or I don't know, someone who can do hula hooping and things like that. Um, so it's always good that the agent or the actor highlights that. If that's a skill I'm after, or they need to speak Spanish, um, if that's a skill I'm after, please do highlight that. And please read briefs carefully. Um, we're very, very busy. And we spend a lot of time and energy going through profiles and CVs. And then only to find out that that person's not got the skill set required. Um, so it's always good to double check the brief and things like that. But absolutely, if there is a skill required, highlight it to us because that's what we're after. Mm. Okay. Okay. I mean, I want to work on Kate's projects, honestly. Like, <laughs> way more fun than mine. I want a stilt walker. Um, I guess we don't we don't have so in in terms of special skills like there may be times when we're specifically looking for something and obviously that will be massively flagged is there room to come in and tell us about stilt walking if that's not what we're asking for probably not so much no. but I mean like always good to have those skills and it, and and again this I don't know if this is the same for you Kate but like in terms of things like horse riding I kind of feel quite I have kind of a few thoughts about this. First of all, great. If you are someone who can afford to, to do horse riding for pleasure, and then that's a skill you can add to your CV, wonderful. But the truth is we don't need it. It isn't a like prerequisite. If we hire you, we hire you um, as an actor. And then if we need you to ride a horse more often than not, we'll put you in with um, like someone who can help you learn to do that, or we'll just put a stunt guy on there. So I feel like because this is such a, like it's such a difficult industry anyway. And sometimes I feel like people should be saving their money on things that you know mean something, especially in times like this. I feel like um, it's, you know, it's important to also state that these aren't things you absolutely have to have on your CV, that there is room to learn them if you're hired for that sort of thing. Mm. Um, and again, I just want you to come in and be you. I never ever want to be in Rest. like the most exciting auditions I've ever had have been actors that have come in and haven't really cared what I have thought about their performance <laughs> frankly they are and they understand that it's a collaboration they may or may not get the role but this is how they thought about it and they go in and I realize that that comes probably with experience and like confidence and not everybody's going to start out like that but that's why I feel like the work is so important in the beginning to have a look at that role look at the text figure out what it is about you that's unique that you can bring to it and then come in and show that we and now I know it doesn't feel like it, it feels like such a power dynamic doesn't it like that we're in the catbird seat and to some extent of course we are but we need our actors to be good or we look terrible at our mm -hmm. job so like someday when we were doing sessions I could have an entire day where I was just like this has not gone well. And then somebody comes in and smashes it out of the park. And honestly, like I feel such a sense of relief. Like there really is a sense that we should be working together. Yeah. I just wish that we could. And that's why I guess making our rooms so comfortable for actors to give them that creative space to be their best selves is so important. But, um, and why I think self-taping actually is really good because people can kind of do their, live their best lives, can't they, you know? <laughs> All right, a bit more, a bit of, a bit of freedom uh, yeah, I think without feeling like they're being observed. Yes, because I mean, and and you get to see like we were, you know, I was talking about this with someone earlier, but you get to see how you look on camera. You get to decide what shows you to your best um, ability, and rather than being afraid of that, 
like it's a great opportunity to embrace it and go okay well, like I can learn from this what can I do to make this more exciting how far can I go does that work or no I look back and it doesn't work okay maybe I can adjust like that like I think actually it's such a treat you know I yeah. think I think what Sophie's saying is really important you know as casting directors we want every actor to come in that room and do well we're gunning for you we're on your side and our jobs are to make you feel relaxed and comfortable and to get the best performance out of you so you know from that angle we do we, we really really want you to do well we will give you all our energy and give everything to you to make you shine to make you feel comfortable but I think it's an important point is trying to be relaxed we're very aware when people are nervous obviously we are you know we can spot it a mile away and again, if that person actually needs to go off for 10, 15 minutes and gather themselves, then absolutely. I'd rather that person did that than come in the room and be, oh, I'm not prepared and get jangly. And it's like, all right, take a big breath, calm down, get a cup of tea, you know, chill out for 10 minutes. Let's, you know, get this together. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a tough job being an actor. I admire every one of you that are doing it. Yeah, there is a reason we're this side of the camera <laughs> that side of the camera yeah this is the most yeah. uncomfortable I've been all day <laughs> yeah but it is true and I feel like casting directors say it all the time and sometimes it doesn't get believed like really are on your side we absolutely do need you to be good and Kate's right like we see when you're nervous and each every time you're nervous we know we instinctively know I think what it takes to get you into a better place whether it's 10 minutes to go cool off whether it's you want to talk about like more holistically about the character or like whether you want us to push you a little bit we instinctively know with the energies that we get because we do it all the time mm -hmm. how to sort of help you along I think mm. yeah that's really nice I mean it's a it's a it's a nice thought as well that the collaboration starts mm. um way before you actually get to the rehearsal room uh, it starts with with you guys um because I suppose you're going to be, uh, you know, you're going to be seeing um, what an actor is like to work with and what it's possible to coax for them. Because I suppose one of the aspects of your job is you're not just looking at what someone's capable of uh, right now. You're looking at what their potential is and what they could do in the future uh, and what you, you, you're kind of looking at them as a, as a foundation to keep building on, right? I think as well, sometimes people overthink it and it's very easy for us to sit here and say, don't overthink it. You know, <laughs> what that part, you know, they want, they train to be an actor. They want to get out there and this is what they want to do. So it's quite easy for us to say not to overthink, you know, to try not to overthink things. But I think if you can leave those thoughts and come in without all that luggage on you and that sort of heaviness of, right, I've got to do it like this, I've got to do it like that. And sometimes I find in castings, people are not listening because they're so clogged up with what's going on in their brain. And they're like, well, what did you just say? And I'm like, right, you need to just be present in the moment and leave everything else outside the door. And we can get out of them what we want. But the exciting thing is, is seeing from our mind's eye where they can go, the potential these actors have got. I mean, it, 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 it's very exciting from our point of view. It's like, wow, that person. And, also, you know, it depends on the director, the producer, and who they're working with, the DOP. You know, they pull out the best of these people. We're all here. We're not on screen. You guys are. So you've got a team around you, which is booting you up and getting the best performance out of you. And I think from an actor's point of view, you're not alone. The whole production is there with you, supporting you and helping you to get it, to nail it. I've gone off town, I've gone off brief, haven't I now? I'm waffling. <laughs> But, but it's so true. And I think like we understand that sometimes much in the same way that I might pitch for a job and be absolutely rubbish because that job's not really for me or for maybe I'm underprepared or, you know, maybe it's just not my style. Actors are the same. Actors can come in for one role on the Monday and be dreadful and then come in for a completely different role on the Wednesday and be amazing. Not every role is gonna suit every actor. So if you come in and just do your best, we will see it. We mm. see talent in whatever form you bring it in. Like that's our skill. That's what we do. So, and we also understand it's a massive journey for an actor. An, act, an actor can literally work for a lifetime. So we understand that you can grow and get better and learn. And so we, we don't ever write anyone off unless you're rude. And then I might write you <laughs> off. To be honest, I might write you off. <laughs> 
but also like yeah. Kate, right, and also like it gives I mean obviously we don't get it so much now that we're not in the room but to get a sense of who we're hiring and who we're matching with a production like no one wants to work with people who aren't particularly nice so it's also getting a sense of you learning about you and having that relationship between us and them grow over a period of time super important mm -hmm. Lovely. Thank you. That's uh, really nicely put, both of you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, so I, I would just like to take it back to a, a few previous points that you uh, that you made. Um, so the first thing you you said, and uh, it, it it's something that I think a lot of people don't. It, it's one of the easiest things I think to lose sight of, is uh, responding to the brief. And making sure to give you the the information that you need in order to to shortlist them and, and bring them forward. Um, so, I suppose uh, one of my questions is: uh, Do you, do you build relationships with actors as they submit themselves um, repeatedly? Because, as you said, you must see people uh, again and again. Um, so presumably um, you remember people when they audition or when even when they just uh, submit. Um, so uh, how important would you say is it to leave a good impression um, so that you can know you can consider them in the future as well? I would just like to say, please let casting directors remember you for the right reasons, <laughs> not the wrong reasons, yeah. Um, Sophie, take over from there. But yeah, that's my biggest point is, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, of course. And and like, of course, I mean, we see the same headshots across our desk or, and we, and there, and we do, I mean, I don't know if I can say this really, but of course I have my favorites actors that maybe I've never even cast them, but they've come in and they've always been lovely and well-prepared. And so I always want to get them back in, even if I've never yet managed to cast them, like, because you do, we are a people business. Mm. We want to connect with um, actors as artists and so there's a level of vulnerability within the casting room for everybody for both parties mm. um, and like of course what Kate is saying is absolutely right like you don't want because also the other thing to remember is that we our memories truly are exceptional it isn't a myth it is actually a reality whether we want to or not we remember everyone we can't mm. help it so I mean, like, just be a human being, I suppose. Be a decent human being, be honest. I think what Kate said earlier was right. Be honest about everything. Be honest about your CV. Be honest about your experience or lack thereof. Like, honesty is refreshing and that's good, I think. All of but it. we can work with honesty. That's the point. If someone's honest, we can work with it. Yeah. You know, it's not a hindrance at all. It's a good thing in my mind and we I can agree. work with it. Yeah. It's, yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously over the years, we've both encountered very odd characters every now and again, and um, I could, yeah, top of my head while you're saying this, I could think of quite a few <laughs> in my head. So, yeah, yeah, let us remember you for the right reasons and not because you want me to hold your coat, dog and bag while you're doing the audition. <laughs> and then get offended when I don't want to hold your dog. I feel like there's a story there, but like off camera, Kate. You yeah, like <laughs> there is. There is. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get that one later. There's not many. Uh, there's not many off the top of my head, but there is a few, you know. But generally, overall, I think you know we meet some incredible people, uh, very uplifting people as well, and very creative people. So generally, it's it, you know I think we're good, but there's the odd one. There's always the odd one in life, isn't there? Wherever yeah. you are, yeah. Yeah, but um, that as well kind of uh, that says to me that even if um, you know, regardless of how far an actor gets through the the submission process and the audition process, um, even if they don't necessarily land the role, it's still there's still a lot of positivity to have out of it there's still uh, experience and there's still uh, you know building a relationship with you and um the session with you sounds like it's probably going to help them deepen their understanding of of themselves as well um so you know even if you don't necessarily land the role there's still a lot to be gained um for the both of you it sounds like they're on our radar if you, i meet someone i've never met before and i'm like why have i never got that guy in before you know, it's like, 
And then I'd say, well, if you updated your headshots, I might have got you in before. But, you know, there is beautiful surprises in the world. You meet these people and you're like, they're oh, just phenomenal. And you could play this, you could play this. And in our minds, we're casting them in all sorts of roles. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, actors are versatile. That is the point. But our job also is to look at them and say we know Tom. We've known Tom for 10 years. But Tom's now 45. He's not 35 anymore. He's entered a different realm in his life. And there's a different side to Tom that's coming out. And there's different characters that he's right for. So in the same breath, we have to get out of the mindset, Tom's always been Tom, he's been 35. He's anymore, he's 45, and he's nailing it being 45. He's come into a different era. So, yeah, from that point of view, I'm, I just, I, I enjoy, you know, I enjoy that sort of, oh, it's someone new, it's someone refreshing, it's someone interesting, it's someone... You know, and there's people that maybe in their first audition aren't great, but their second audition are fantastic for the next role. It just is all dependent. And like Sophie said, we all have bad days, you know. Yeah. But I think from mine and Sophie's point of view, it's okay to have a bad day. We don't, we don't all nail it every time. But our point is, we'd love to see you again for something else. We cast so many varied roles. The scope is there to see people. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose it's almost an inevitability. The the number of roles out there are infinite. There's uh, there's there's going to be a role for you. Um, there's no other way it could be. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so going back to uh, something you said about self tapes and it really being the the opportunity to uh, you know experiment and and maybe have a bit of a play. Um, would you say that they fall in the same uh, the same kind of way as, as auditions? Is, is a self tape a place to uh, experiment and um, put that forward? When you give someone a script, are you looking for them to bring an aspect of themselves to it in the same way? What do you think, Kate? Self tape, there's a lot of scope there. I mean, we obviously give it a little bit of direction, a little bit of background. Um, I think it's very diff uh, different projects to require different things, don't they? And I think sometimes I got a self tape recently and they'd done three different takes. They weren't very long, so that was great. Um, but the interesting thing was the first take was as per directed, as per brief. The second mm -hmm. take, they'd added a little bit of them in. And the third take, they did it as themselves, how they interpreted the brief. And I loved it. The third take, I was like, wow. Okay, that's interesting. Um, it depends. It really depends on the casting director and the director. And also, you know, maybe the text is, I don't know, four or five pages long rather than a paragraph. So they're sort of weighing that up. Self-tape is interesting. It must be more, more freedom for the actor. That's how I feel. It's, it's nice to, because sometimes you can be directed within an inch of your life, you know, whereas this way it's giving you the organic freedom to come back with, your interpretation, which is always interesting, always in a yeah. good way, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. And I feel like I completely agree with you. And I feel like COVID has shown me, I don't know if you agree, Kate, a completely different way of working that initially I was like, how's this going to work? And now I'm yeah. like, I don't know that I'll ever go back in those first rounds to what we did before. First of all, we're opening up to so much more talent, so many more people that we can see because our time isn't going in and out the room or whatever, spending 15 to 20 minutes with each person. We just have to watch, we just have to watch the finished article. And as like a total socialist, I have to say opening it up to the masses is really appealing to me. Seeing mm -hmm. new talent, being mm -hmm. able to absorb all of those new faces is absolutely like cha up, changed, like it's changed the way I, go into it and so and, and now it's like oh let's give them a chance yeah let's give them a chance to see what they can do it's sort of how it should have been really this industry to start with where you know I felt it was quite narrow before um and so like being able to do a self-tape is it doesn't matter if you're not very good to start off with like there are so many things online that can help you and you can get good and actually and again I'm very conscious of financials for people but you don't have to have a lot of money to do a good self-tape you just need some natural light, a plain-ish backdrop and a phone 
that's all you need, really. If you want to zhuzh it up a little bit with your ring lights, which admittedly I have, so I have one on me now, I didn't think about that, did I? But you know, <laughs> or you want to get one of those brilliant pop-up backgrounds, then fine, but you don't have to. Sorry. And, we, and like, you know, you can really play around, but I, I also think it's like a lesson every time you do it, isn't it? Every time we're becoming more technically aware, you can sort of watch it back and self-assess, decide what you think is good, you know, you're, you're watching it through our eyes and you're saying, yes, I think this is a good representation of my business. Brilliant, mm. right? Absolutely, I, my one gripe for self-tape is, please name them with your name. Label them, please, label them. Oh God, I mean, Tagmin's brilliant. So the agents and people that go use to Tagmin, that's great. But the most important person is you. And if you don't label it with you, it causes us a lot of stress. If you don't do your eye dent and we're all there at the computer going, oh, what did they say their name was? And you start looking back through your suggestions thinking, oh, I'm sure that's that person. I'm sure that's them. It's yeah, please, please. Your self tape is important, but the most important thing is it's labeled with your name. It is about <laughs> you, so yes, please do label it. And I think also do check phone settings and things. I know that Apple have come out with a new something about the settings on the phone. So when you're recording, it records in some different format or it's too big. Just double check these things. There's, I mean, I'm sure there's bits on CDG, CDA, my website, Sophie's, you know, we all got hints, little hints. And as Sophie said, you don't need to go out and buy ring lights and backdrops. You know, it can be done. Just don't stand in front of the window so you're in silhouette. <laughs> Natural light, but just not that way around. There's little tips, but you watch yourself take back and you'll see them. You'll see what we see. So, yeah. self tapes great. I, I like Zoom castings as well, though. Ooh, I did a Zoom chem read the other week and I was like, this is blowing my mind a little bit. But I mean, yeah, it's a new world. And oh my gosh, I'm so glad it's not just my office that has the, the labelling issue. So it's oh, really yeah. to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think if any casting directors are watching this, they're going, yes, yes, yeah, label, label. <laughs> well, um, let's uh let's take that as your uh as your opportunity to to let people know how you like your uh your self-tapes labeled. So obviously you mentioned one of the most important aspects is uh their name so you can find them again. Um, are there any other important parts of uh important piece of information you need included there as standard? From my point of view, no, just their name. Just a name. And so many times we get self-tapes that come through with just a name. But also if you're doing a Zoom casting, please make sure you change your name. Don't wait in the waiting room called iPhone. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm casting men and I've got Janet waiting in the waiting room, right, right. You know, there's little, little things you can do. Um, from an actor's point of view, it's important. Your name is important. Who you are is important to us. But from my point of view, I would just be grateful for her name. Um, Sophie might have characters and things she wants on her, I don't know. Well, we, we uh, do you know, um, my brilliant friend, Annalie Powell, who's a brilliant casting director in her own right, has set me up with this wonderful Dropbox system where we send links out now with our um, yes. self-tape requests and they can upload their own self-tapes to our Dropbox so that we just have to drag and upload. But basically they're labeled with, their name, who they're reading for, and like if we need a scene number or anything. Yeah, but like, love it, changed my life. Dropbox is amazing, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> no, just sharing everything on it, share, share, share. <laughs> amazing, yeah. so yes. Well, so the, the, the most important aspect then is a, is a name. I suppose um, a lot of just nailing the fundamentals comes down to um, kind of not, not cheating yourself out of success by missing out on some small detail like that. Um, you know, just, just make it so that you're able to be found again. Uh, you know, they can impress you all they want, but you need to be able to get back to them to, to let them know just how much they impressed you. <laughs> Otherwise. Excuse me, yeah. <laughs> Quite all right. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, and I suppose uh, that's, that's kind of, um, the same with what you said in a about cover letters or particularly submissions and cover notes. Um, so in your brief, uh, in your briefs, you'll often ask for something quite specific. Um, and sure, they might have it on their profile. You okay? 
and the water went down the wrong way. <laughs> it's really oh, no. Yeah, I'm good now. Sorry, Rob, for interrupting. Yeah. No, 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 that's all right, as long as you're okay. Um, so, uh, yes, with, um, with submissions, it sounds to me like uh, it, it's another quite similar way that people can um, accidentally slip up. So if you're looking for something quite specific and they have um, that specific thing, um, perhaps a, a different language they can speak or a physical skill they have, um, to like, uh, if it's on their profile, is that something you'll go hunting for, uh, or is uh, is it really important? Is it you know just the most important that they have it there in their cover notes, easily accessible, just confirmed in black and white? Uh, for me personally, when I'm doing commercials, the turnaround is so quick. I do not have time to start rummaging in people's CVs. Um, so unless it's put in the notes, and I do ask a lot if it's a skill required to put it in the notes, unless it has been put in the notes, I generally put them in the notes because I don't have time. Just to give you an idea, I had um, suggestions today for a job. I had 800 suggestions for one part. Yeah, which is That's phenomenal. Cool. It is the age range, don't get me wrong, it's a 25 year old girl. So yes, of course I'm gonna get that amount of suggestions. Um, but you, you know, you need to stand out from if I needed a skill and it's written in the note box, then I'm gonna look at you straight away. But agents particularly, um, I find with actors when they represent themselves or it's not come through an agent, they are more likely to highlight that skill for me, if I'm honest. Mm. Some agents, you know, agents are busy as well. I get that. Yeah, so they're sure. just getting suggestions off to us. But um, yeah, for me, just because of the turnaround of commercials, sometimes I could be casting a job this week and shooting next week. It'll be on TV at the end of next week. So yeah, the turnaround is so quick that I haven't got time to look at 800 CVs to see if that person does judo or does horse ride or does the skill that I want. Um, Sophie, I'm guessing, has a little bit more time on jobs than I do. <laughs> well, definitely. My goodness, that is a fast turnaround. My gosh. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've got to be fascinated to work in your office for a day. To <laughs> be going nuts by the end of the day. <laughs> do it. Um, yeah, I mean, and I guess, I mean, maybe I'm making an assumption here, but I assume perhaps some of that is because they don't read it properly because they're working so fast. Yeah, yeah. So that doesn't help you, of course, but I just wonder I, if that's like... <laughs> you know. um, yeah, I mean, speed is everything, even for me, actually. So I like the information given to me as I've requested it. Um, but also... Uh, cover note I think is a slightly misleading term just because these days obviously people aren't writing cover notes but e emails I guess if and mm. I'd have to state this like if you're gonna send an email about a specific project great say it but every email you send me and just because I mean Kate said it earlier though I'm, I'm about to be a little bit blunt about it I think like we are so busy you cannot possibly comprehend the mammoth ton of work we have to get through in a day that like less is more we know why you're writing of course you want of course you're introducing yourselves to us for whatever it is but I'm always like say what you want and then send the email don't like I've, I've, so many times I've gone just a short email and it's like 10, 10 paragraphs long and I'm like I can't I just can't read that I can't I just don't have time so I think like you know something like you're casting The Witcher. I hear there's a role of blah, blah, blah. I would really love to put myself forward, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's my spotlight link, send. Done, that's all we need. That's enough. Never try mm -hmm. to build a relationship over an email is probably what I would say. You can build a relationship in the room or with a good tape or good work together, but probably giving me your life story isn't gonna, isn't gonna work. That sounds really awful, but I'm just being blunt because I think it's helpful. I think oh, really? it's, it's brain capacity, Sophie. I can't intake all that information, you know. It's like, it's just direct to the point. We're like, great, 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 done. You know, information done. Yeah. Um, but my brain goes at 100 miles an hour and I'm jumping from four different projects, you know, in my brain. So to take all that information in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm applying to Kate Evans. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I agree, Sophie. Less is more. You know, get to the point. Let us know what you what you want. You know, what you're after from us. If it's a role or you're just introducing yourself. Uh, yeah, just short and sweet is the is the way forward. Yeah, I mean, from what I've seen of, of briefs, they're usually uh, pretty direct and they outline fairly definitively what it is they need from a person. And so um, uh, a covenant perhaps is is just a confirmation of that. Just uh, just kind of like, yes, I've read the I've read the terms and conditions. Um, and <laughs> You've got it, Rob. You've got it. <laughs> when do I start? <laughs> Kate needs some help. She's got four jobs, babes. On you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. I've got 800 or so applications to look through for this one. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> so, oh, actually, yeah, uh, one question that we get uh, a, a fair amount. Uh, this is taking it right back to, to self-tapes again. What is your recommended method of dealing with when someone gives you a script that has multiple characters in, mm -hmm. um, so it, you know, dialogue as opposed to a monologue. What's your recommended way of dealing with that? What, uh, you mean as an actor doing a self take where maybe she's yeah. they're speaking to two characters? Um, or, yeah, if, if, if as, a, as an actor, you're, um, the script dictates that you're gonna be speaking to someone and they're going to be replying and it's an in interaction. Um, you know, would you recommend uh, getting someone else involved or uh, what What for you is the is the best way? Um, yes, I mean, we, so my husband's an actor and we do self tapes here late at night with our little ring light. Um, and I will read in with him. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I guess that's sort of cheating because I am obviously a casting director, but I, so I would say if you, if you have someone to read in with you, great. Otherwise you can get those recorded line things that people have, um, or um, very fond these days of places like We Audition or things where you can go online, get an actor to read in with you and it just records your section, um, but you can hear the voice reading in with you. Very fond of those things, but ultimately, especially given COVID, do whatever works, mm. but just survive it basically in whatever way you can, yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree with Sophie. Absolutely. You know, in these bleak times, make the best of it. And if you don't have someone there, then you don't have someone there. It, you know, but we're still interested in you and what you've got to say and how you portray the character. So yeah. I know it's tough as an actor not having anyone to feed off or anything, but we still look at what you're doing. You know, we're not listening out for that other voice. And then sometimes when the other voice isn't there, I'm thinking, fair play to you. You played that really well. <laughs> I've sometimes sat there and said the lines for them as I'm watching them. All oh, right, yeah. I'll play the other role on the self tape. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great, great. Um, so, uh, yeah, the uh, so with uh, with self tapes as well. Um, you you say the setup isn't terribly important. Uh, it's just the uh, it's just a camera. Mm -hmm. and and uh, adequate lighting. Uh, is there are, there, are there any things that you've seen before in, in self tapes that maybe distract you from it? Uh, where's, the, where's the limit in terms of how casual it is? Um, any, anything like uh, clothing, background, etc. Washing machines aren't great, if I'm honest. They, they don't give anything to the self tape, having a washing machine going in the background. <laughs> children and animals I can forgive we're all at home it's just not life isn't it um I just try and keep it as simple and clear it's 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 it is about you so getting the lighting right and having the camera on you and not tilted downwards and getting the camera straight in front of you um very basic things if I'm honest lots of things we can forgive we're at home but we're working so it you know we just it works you know we all know we're doing this so um, but yeah, anything loud, washing machines, you can't help it if Amazon comes to the door while you're in the middle of a Zoom cast, <laughs> <laughs> I've had that. or Nan that's come in to make a cup of tea <laughs> and wants to have a chat with you. <laughs> um, they're mainly Zoom. Um, generally, overall, it's they're pretty good, but I'd say anything loud and lighting, if you're standing in front of a window, we can't see you, you're silhouette. So, you know, and as plain a background as possible, just so the emphasis is on you and not the background. Um, okay. trying to think. Sophie, you must have a few thoughts on that one. I mean, I think, I think, I 
think you I think you know really I think you know when you watch it back if it's you know if there's something distracting you um and if you don't know then I think the issue is bigger <laughs> like if you don't know that like you had a conversation with your nan mid tape and you've continued <laughs> And you don't think that's an issue. I'm just not sure this game is for you. <laughs> but like, you know, I mean, for example, here we all are on our computers. This is all of us pretty well framed. Yeah. I, this is fine. This works. Is what that's I would what say. Your, Rob, yours is perfect. You've got that grey background as well, which is just perfect for your skin. You're set and ready to go. <laughs> Done. Done. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I thought it'd be good. Not it, bright. I must admit, my lighting's not great. It's a bit bright. <laughs> I'm on my bed. I'm making it work. I'm making it work. <laughs> um, so I've uh, I've actually got some questions from uh, people who are watching. Uh, so You're I thought watching. it might be nice to share oh. some of those with you and get That's some uh, conversation going. Um, so we've got a question here. Uh, let me just drag it over. All right. Uh, what is your advice on over rehearsing your self tape? I find the more I rehearse, the less natural it looks. Absolutely yeah. right. And also, you're being too critical of yourself then. You've done it so many times, you're picking up on every tiny detail. I'd probably say the first tape was a better one. I would agree. But it's not overthinking it, which, is, again, as we said, was very difficult to not overthink things, mm. you know? Um, I, I would 100% agree and I, I would say change the way in which you're doing it so work more before you even start to put it on tape do you know what I mean mm, okay yeah no that that makes sense so uh, you don't necessarily have to um you know just uh, pencil it out uh kind of thing in the first instance have a bit of a play around with it and then do it for real I, I mean, I, I think whatever works, but like learn as you go. And I, and I would agree, like, I think Kate's absolutely hit, hit the nail on the head. I, I think then you're being overcritical and you're over mannerisming yourself. Like you're worried really about how it's coming across rather than your performance, which mm. is where self-taping will work against you. I mean, sometimes just take yourself off, go for a walk around the park, get the cobwebs out of your brain, you know, wiggle your face around, jump up and down, get a different energy atmosphere about you. And go back to it yeah um but yeah i think whatever works for you but i think it, it, it's it's difficult to not criticize yourself obviously and if you're watching it back time and time again it's going to get worse i'd delete the whole lot if it was me and go right i'm going to do this in an hour's time and come back to it with a fresh pair of eyes <laughs> yeah i suppose it's kind of like if you uh if you write an email and you 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 proof it and proof it and then you send it off and then uh the, the more you proof it, the more likely you are to pick it up. And then you're then you're picking at the details and without realizing it, you're making it uh, you're you're making it worse um, to, by getting a little bit too close to it. Uh, so just going perhaps with 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 your instincts and uh, and uh, not getting too deep into it and not getting too deep into your own head as well. So it's a, a lot of the, the, the advice today is just uh, relax you're probably doing better than you think you are yeah, <laughs> yeah that's uh well that's uh, that's a very nice message um another question here that i've got is uh as a recently graduated actor all of my auditions so far have been over zoom what is your advice on mastering an in-person audition after being virtual for so long a very good question oh god kate I'd be really excited to be in a casting room if I was him. I would be con con content. I'm going to be very excited to go back into the studio, I must admit. Um, oh. It's better than the Zoom. The energy and the atmosphere. Um, I don't, I don't, oh, God, it's tough on that one. You'll enjoy it. Don't overthink it. You will enjoy it. And you'll just enjoy seeing someone face to face again, finally. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, it's a tough question. So have you got thoughts on that? I guess only that two things, I suppose. The first one is the positive is you aren't alone. You are about to be supported mm. by a casting director whose job it is to make that an easy thing for you to do. Um, and the other thing was some advice I had when I, it was the night before I was in LA about to meet casting directors and heads of studios. And some, I was just like, I don't know what I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing here. I've made a mistake. I don't know what I'm doing here. 
I've, what have I got to say for myself? And then my friend said to me, well, you're just going to make friends, aren't you? And you can do that. And I was like, oh yeah, I can, oh yeah, I can do that. And really that's all you're doing. You're about to make a new friend. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That is delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. fine. I can't claim credit for it. <laughs> it was good advice because I thought, oh, it's simple actually. If you just think I can do that, probably. Yeah. Which will help with nerves. It will help with all of that. If you're thinking, yeah, I'm just going to meet a new friend. It's yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, it's nice. Enjoy it. <laughs> would be my advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, again, it sounds like a, a lot of. Uh, a lot of the advice here as well is just centering around kind of enjoying the process. I mean, yeah, sure. It's very high pressure. There's, there's a, there's a lot. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, it would be, um, it would be, it would be fairly easy to go off and do another job, but it wouldn't be, it, you wouldn't get what you do out of, out of this one. There's a reason why it's the dream for so many people and why so many people are so fiery and passionate about it. Um, you know, and it, that's because it's fun. It's yeah. incredibly fun and fulfilling and satisfying. Um, and I, I think a lot of what you said today is just about embracing that um, and really um, throwing yourself into the experience. And, you know, not only is that going to lead, I think, from, from what you've been telling me to a, a, a more enjoyable experience overall, but also just positively benefit. I mean, you must get a lot of, uh, a lot of joy and a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of it must get a lot of use out of just seeing people enjoying themselves and having fun and um, really putting themselves into it. Absolutely. I mean, from my point of view, I'd like to think everyone walks out of that audition room feeling good about themselves. They're having a positive experience, an uplifting experience, something they can take away with them and think, you know what, even if I don't get that job, that was brilliant. I enjoyed that. That was something that you know, the casting director got something out of me. We're all under pressure. Sophie and I are under pressure too. We have clients. So, you know, we, we have the pressure as well as the acts are having the pressure. And I'd like to think most casting directors don't pass that pressure on. You know, it, it's, it's, it should be a positive, enjoyable experience. We love our jobs. We have the best jobs in the world. We get to meet the most amazing people and talk to the most amazing people and learn every single day. We're learning something new. And all of, you know, the whole, it's difficult to say this, but all of us collectively can make this an enjoyable experience. No one should be coming out of an audition feeling that they've done the worst job ever and what are they going to do? It's, they, it, that's not right. That's really not right. Um, and I'd like to think that every casting director out there and director and producers and the whole team, we all want to make this a positive experience for that person. Um, I mean, as I said, I just, I love my job. I'm, I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world sometimes, I really do. And I enjoy meeting so many talented people and these talents vary in all sorts of different ways. It's, you know, this is a great industry to be in. It's a tough industry to be in, but be positive about it. We're all on the same side, basically. I think what I'm trying to say is, yeah. Sorry. No, I can't follow that. It was lovely. <laughs> you do enjoy your job, don't you? <laughs> I mean, I have to say, like, I'm not so sure everyone gives good room, but but I can see that you would give a good room and I hope I would give a good room. But um, I would also just say, don't focus on the end result. It, yeah. You don't need to worry about whether you will or will not get the role. Sometimes that is arbitrary and out of your control, but you should enjoy working on the performance that's what you're good at that's what you bring worry about that yeah that's all the rest will take care of itself yeah wonderful wonderful um so uh another question that we've got in uh, probably the last one i think looking at the time um how vital would you say education is for actors uh, do you notice when actors who audition for you haven't attended top and often very expensive acting schools okay not interested if I'm honest top end mm. acting school doesn't make you a good actor if you're a good actor you could get training anywhere the acting is within you um I like to search for my actors high and low it is as simple as that and there's so many undiscovered talent out there that could be just going to a drama school on a Saturday 
or could you know be I don't know um a little village in Wales I've been doing Amdram since she was five years old and she does have talent there you know I think talent can be anywhere um training does help obviously it will help you it'll give you your tools that you can walk into a room and pull on and you know but talent's everywhere it doesn't really matter to me which drama school you went to as long as you've got some training in there so I know that you 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 know how to portray something and how to grasp a character and how to live it and breathe it there's I mean some people it's not very often but there are some people that never go to drama school never get any training and they're bloody amazing you know but they're one-offs I think to me it's a level playing field it really is I'm not really interested in what school you went to or, or the drama school yeah I'm interested to see that you went to drama school you've had some sort of training whether it be a week's course somewhere at least I know you've had some sort of training and as I said the tools you're given to cope with situations and how to you know do your job um but for me it's an open playing field absolutely Wonderful. Yeah. I would absolutely agree. I, I would say something that's obviously so obvious, but for far too long, this industry has felt inaccessible to anyone but those with money. And I think actually the stories I want to hear are the ones that are told by all do different sorts of people in different walks of life who come from different places, speak with different accents, come from different socioeconomic backgrounds. Those are the stories I want to hear. And those are the people I'm after. And ultimately, what Kate said is absolutely right. Talent will out. We'll find it. Yeah. That's it. That's what you're there for, right? Right, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Well, um, that's the end of the questions. Um, if, you, if you have any, uh, any final thoughts, though that does seem like a nice succinct way to, to finish off. So thank you for, for those. Um, any, final, any final things to add? No, I found a new friend, Sophie. There we go. So I'm honestly going to say the same thing. I was like, let's hang out for drinks when we're allowed to do this. Like, <laughs> like hashtag bants the whole way through. I loved it. <laughs> I can't believe a whole hour has just flown by. You guys are the best. I was like, wow, okay. Thoroughly enjoyable. Um, Rob, always lovely to see you. Sophie, lovely to meet you and absolutely up for drinks. Yes. Um, I'm a great admirer of your work, Sophie. Oh, right back at you, Kate. I was quite yeah. nervous coming on today, but you're lush. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. It's been a joy. And I hope everyone's enjoyed our comments yeah. and our advice and our smiles yeah. and our positivity. Go out there and get the world, guys. Go and do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you Excellent so message. much. Wonderful. Well, thank you both again for your time this evening, uh, for your for your your wonderful thoughts and um, sharing your insight with us. I hope everyone found it useful, and I hope everyone uh, carries it forward. And um, I don't doubt that uh, that you'll be seeing some of the people watching in your audition rooms in the in the fairly near future. One hopes. Fingers crossed. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Have a lovely evening. Bye.